Once upon a time, there was a little girl, only 12 years old, who loved to read. Her grandmother, who was a very wise and strong woman, gave her a book, Desert Flower, by Varys Deary. The book was the autobiography of Varys herself, who grew up a nomad girl in the desert of Somalia. When Varys was a child, she became the survivor of female genital mutilation. And when she was 13, only one year older than the little girl herself, she was supposed to get married to an old man. Fortunately, Varys managed to escape. She escaped through the desert to the capital, and later, a cleaning job brought her to the United Kingdom. There, she was discovered as a model and started a very successful career. With her own story in mind, Varys was appointed a United Nations ambassador, fighting to protect young girls worldwide. The little girl reading the story was deeply moved and fascinated by what she had read. She started reading every book she could about young women worldwide and the challenges they faced in their home countries. Along the way, it became clear for her that she wanted to become part of the movement that, as she called it, contributed to making the world a better place. A dream was born. Fast forward to tonight. The little girl has grown up and is standing on this stage right in front of you. She... <laughs> Creating a strong, supportive community around her would become key in her pursuing her dream. And she would like to share with you some of the discoveries she's made along her way in pursuing this dream. Wow, that sounds great, you tell me, but how do I get this type of community? How about we grow it together? There are three questions you want to ask yourself. The first one is, what is the meaning of life? Okay, no, that's a bit too big. But how about, what gives you meaning in life? This could be anything from wanting to protect the environment or building your business or maybe taking good care of your children. It could be leaving a legacy on this planet or simply living a happy life. And what steps are you taking towards this goal? With my own passion for books and this vague dream of wanting to make the world a better place in mind, I stumbled across another book when I was 18 in a Berlin bookstore. Creating a World Without Poverty by Nobel Peace Prize winner Professor Mohamed Yunus. The book was about poor women in Bangladesh and how they met weekly in their women's groups, talking about the problems they had, but also the dreams about the business ideas they had. And together they received loans at affordable interest rates called microcredits, which helped them to buy whatever they needed to pursue their business. Supported by their women's groups and also through the extra income they had through their new business, they managed to get themselves out of poverty and transform their communities. I was excited. This book actually seemed to offer me one of the first practical solutions and an effective way to get people out of poverty. I knew this was a direction I wanted to go in the future, but I was still young. I still had to learn a lot. So for the next five years, I started, I really committed to volunteering and studying all over the world to learn more about practical solutions to global challenges. I worked in the slums of South Africa and volunteered at the, inter at the International Criminal Trial in Cambodia for an NGO. I also worked for human rights centers in Asia and in Europe and explored the world of international organizations in New York. At the same time, I also studied international relations. I did my master's in human rights law and joined the United Nations Student Association. And guess what? In my first job after university, I actually got to manage a microcredit community program, just like the one I had read about in Mohammed Yunus's book. I got to visit them regularly. It was in Myanmar. And there, I got to see firsthand how these communities work together, how they empower each other, what a strong network they build between themselves. The message each of them got from their community was, yes, you can do it, and we will help you get there. Sharing in hopes and fears and laughter and tears. For yourself, it's really about reflecting what kind of community you want to have in your life. The experience really showed me how investing in social impact can change the, the lives of generations to come. 
This approach called impact investing has the potential to really change things in this world, if done well, creating a strong impact community around it and really making sure we reach the poorest in an effective manner and in a fair manner. I decided to found my own company at the time to um, go after this dream and really work with clients on this topic. I also started having my own investments in African social businesses. And yeah, it was really great to see. For yourself, reflect. When was the last time you were deeply moved about something? Maybe it was a book you read, you read. Maybe it was a conversation you had or um, a movie you saw. And maybe it triggered a dream of yours. And what steps are you taking towards this dream? Which brings us to our second point. What kind of empowerment do you need? And where can you get it? Empowerment can, you, can be both emotional as well as professionally. So on the emotional level, usually your friends and family, your business partners are your strongest support network. Over the years, I've built a very strong network of friends and family who are even here today, many of you, and um, a lot of you are my, uh, my biggest cheerleaders, but your business partners can also become part of your emotional support um, over the years. Professionally, I would say reach out to people to connect with them and learn from them. However, put your hand up. Who of you ever gets shy about reaching out to people? Yep, I thought so. <laughs> Me too, like many of us. But let's be honest, what do we really have to lose in reaching out? My parents have always taught me to at least try. Who knows what opportunity might be around the corner for you? For myself, I started going more to conferences and events. I joined Entrepreneurship Hub and Female Founder Circles. And if you ever get shy, just ask people questions. Most people love to share about themselves. <laughs> and once you reach out, life might actually surprise you. I remember going into my first social business conference. I was nervous, but very excited. And who was there with a big smile greeting me? Nobel Peace Prize winner, Professor Muhammad Yunus, the person whose vision, whose book had inspired me in the first place. Uh, imagine you could meet your idol, how would that be? <laughs> At lunch, I saw a free seat next to him, and in that moment, I realized two things. First of all, that I was a complete chicken, and I had no idea what to talk to Nobel Peace Prize winner about. <laughs> but the second one was, this could be my opportunity of a lifetime. So the chicken that was me walked over on his little chicken legs and asked nicely if the seat was free. It was. <laughs> Professor and I got into a really fantastic conversation and I invited him to Zurich, which he was really excited about. And this whole event opened a lot of doors. He connected me with people from his community who connected me with further people. And my network grew. I started working with clients all over the world on wonderful impact projects. And it was just a wonderful experience. Yourself, take the time to reflect what kind of empowerment it is that you need in your life. First of all, people around you who support you for emotional needs, people who are there for you in your difficult times, people to, yeah, just support you. And then also professionally, what is it that you need? What kind of people do you need to go further in your career as well? So that can be people to connect with, to support with, to brainstorm with. And then go out and search for communities that you can join, for example, professional associations, or look for online communities for events where you find them. If you do not tend to find them, you can also reach out and build your own community. Which brings me to our third question, which is how can you actually support those in your surroundings best in achieving their dreams? So for me, I always look out if there's anything where I can connect to people, where I can give advice or somewhere where I can help them in another way. Um, I also started regular co-mentoring where we learn from one another, also very helpful. I got that from my family where we always brainstorm about our ideas together. And um, also think about how can you use technology and social media to empower your community. 
So for example, I use LinkedIn whenever a friend is looking for a new opportunity and often one post about them leads to new opportunities already. It's amazing to see. I really enjoy connecting people because we get to see how this network grows and grows and becomes stronger and stronger, especially also in the realm of female founders, investors and professionals. In, on LinkedIn, I also met Dabreen, a young guy from rural Uganda. And we started the project Yes Impact Sisters together. We focus on entrepreneurs and their communities in rural Uganda. We've reached over 3,000 people so far. And we really focus there on agriculture, on business creation, on financial literacy, and really empowering them and creating a strong community. I got to visit them last month, as you can see in the picture, and it was absolutely amazing to see how they're developing. They are, there's beautiful developments in the communities, they're supporting each other, they're building businesses together, and absolutely great to see. And guess what I got as a thank you present by them? It was a chicken. <laughs> So remember the girl that had such chicken legs and was not daring to walk up to the Nobel Peace Prize when I actually received a chicken. Um, I could not take it on the plane with me. So it's now living its best life in Uganda, I hope. <laughs> Who knows? For me, it was a book at a young age that triggered my dream and shaped my vision. Creating community would become such a major part for me in going after my dreams, but also helping others achieve their dreams. Yourself, what was your younger self passionate about? Is it still the same now? What are you passionate about now? Let's connect and reconnect with our dreams and then create the strong community around us to go after them. Remember the three questions I asked you. First of all, what gives you meaning in life? Second of all, empowerment. What kind of empowerment do you need and where can you get it? And then ask for support. How can you support those in your surroundings best? I call that a yes circle, short for your empowerment and support circle. You is probably the most, uh, yes is probably the most positive word we have. Yes, you can. Yes, we can do it. The circle itself, it describes oneness and connection, movement together. So reach out to people, build your own yes circle that will help you go after your dreams. Have you talked to the person next to you yet or behind you? Who knows who might become part of your yes circle and whose yes circles you will become a part of? Thank you. Thank you.